In this session, we're going to take a look at the Payment Gateways settings for EDD. Out of the box, EDD handles PayPal Standard, and you can click Test Payment. That allows you to mess around with things without having to set up a payment gateway. I'm going to turn that on right now. If you're accustomed to working with PayPal at all, this is going to look very familiar. You can choose what kind of credit card you want to take. And then there are your PayPal settings. This looks pretty simple. However, things can get pretty crazy once you start looking at the different payment gateways available to you. This is the extensions page for EDD. And these are some of the payment gateways that you could choose if you wished. There's Stripe at the top. That's my favorite, actually. But there are some PayPal options, Coinbase, Paytrail, Cybersource, Authorize.net, and there are some bundles here that include several different extensions with a payment gateway to help enhance the gateway. WePay, Braintree, BluePay, First Data, and then you get down here and realize there are actually four pages of these. So if you're wondering whether or not EDD will handle the payment gateway you're already using, the answer is probably. There's even an option here to allow people to pay by check. Now each of these payment gateways is going to have its own set of settings because they each have a different way to communicate with them, whether by API or some other key or username and password or whatever. We'll take a look at several of these payment gateways in later sessions. Now let's take a look at the emails tab. This allows you to set up who gets what kind of email and what that email looks like. There are two templates right now and you can get extensions for new templates. And here you can preview the purchase receipt and optionally send a test email. There's the from name and the from address and the email subject. And here's what the receipt looks like. Now you'll note these bits of code in curly braces. Down below here are all the options you could use and it's pretty comprehensive. You could write up a really excellent email with this. Then we also have new sale notifications. So this would email you when someone buys something. And here's a list of placeholder options. This is where sale notification emails should go. And then there's an option to say, don't even email me when there's a new sale. Our last tab is miscellaneous and actually has quite a few things. You can disable Ajax on the shopping cart. You can redirect to checkout immediately after adding an item to the cart. This is useful if you have only one item in your store. It removes a step. You can disable live credit card validation, disable guest checkout, so people must be logged in in order to purchase. You can show the registration and login forms on the checkout page for non-logged in users. You can allow item quantities to be changed at checkout, and you can allow customers to use multiple discounts on the same purchase. And then you can disable cart saving. Normally, if someone puts something in their cart and then leaves and then comes back, it's still in the cart. And here's a section on how to handle file downloads. You can adjust the download method, the download limit, a link expiration time, and you can disable the ability to re-download things that people have downloaded before. You have the option to enable SKUs. And then there's a Terms of Agreement section, which can be quite useful. This is particularly good for when you're selling software. Someone must agree to some terms before downloading that software. And then there are some button texts. And then the option to not cache the checkout page. Sometimes caching plugins can be a little overly aggressive and you might end up looking at someone else's cart. This disables that. And there we have all the settings. Next we'll take a look at creating some products and see how that works.